Hello, welcome to the video, which is to show you around the latest car I'm putting up for sale. This is a 2013 Honda N-Box G. Just imported it from Japan, got it ready for sale. It's all registered, ready to go now. It was a grade 4B at auction in Japan and it's covered just under 69,000 miles, so 68,800. Now, if you find yourself thinking, well, Andrew, uh, it's called Andrew's Japanese Cars, but you seem to be focusing entirely on Hondas at the moment. <laughs> there have been quite a few Hondas recently, haven't there? Not uh, how it was intended, but I buy a good car when I see it, uh, whether it's a Honda or another brand, and it just so happens that there was a, a run of Hondas came up. So that's why we've had quite a few Hondas recently. But there are lots of others on the way. So Suzuki, Mitsubishi, three Daihatsus, there are a couple more Hondas as well. Uh, if you want to make sure you hear about those, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You can also see all the cars I've got for sale on the website, andrewsjapanesecars.com. Okay, let's have a look around the outside. So it's got a matching set of Bridgestone tires. Rain or monsoon shields on the windows, as is usual for cars imported from Japan. The colour is Cool Mist Metallic, that's what Honda call it. So as usual the offside reversing light in there has been converted to a fog light to comply with UK regulations. I'm trying to give a sense of the size of the uh, of the vehicle. Uh, a lot of customers, when they contact me about these, they are worried that the car is actually quite big. I think that's just the maybe the angle I've been holding the camera or uh, or the way the camera portrays it. But uh, they really are quite a compact car, although they feel pretty big from the inside. I'll put the dimensions, uh, the exterior footprint of the car, actually on the on the screen, so you can get an idea. Maybe compare it to what you're used to. Let's have a look inside now. So we have keyless entry, keyless starting. There's two keys with this car. I can extract them from my pocket. I will show them to you. There they are. So you can either lock and unlock with the keys or you can use these buttons here. So that's locked and that's unlocked. Doors open to a full 90 degrees and the seats are at a good height, so really easy to get in and out of. So on the door here, we've got the switches for the windows all round, automatic uh, lowering on the driver's door, lock and unlock there, electric mirrors with folding as well. A couple of stickers there. So one to say that that was an engine oil change, that's a transmission fluid change. Well, we're here, we may as well talk about that. So in preparation for sale, I have changed the engine oil, oil filter, transmission fluid and filter, air filter, cabin filter and spark plugs. They're due at 100,000 kilometers. And this has gone over that. So they've been changed too. Down here, we've got the headlight adjustment, vehicle stability off if you want it. That's the rear fog light switch that I've fitted it's a foot operated parking brake. So it's basically press on and then press down and then it, the ratchet will, will release and you let it up to, uh, to let the brake off. This mat is just my, uh, my little mat to keep the mats underneath nice. So the steering wheel is height adjustable, not adjustable for reach, but it is adjustable for height. Econ just adjusts the characteristics of the CVT uh, shift points not really shift points as such because it, it doesn't have gears to shift between, but it makes the engine basically rev higher so you can press on a little bit more if you need to. Indicators on the right. So we've got a power socket there, a little bit of storage there, more storage there, more storage there. 
it's a keyless start as I said so the button for that is there CVT automatic transmission air conditioning that's all the recirculate controls a heat and uh, rear heated window there driver and passenger airbag and you probably spotted the logo there comes with a set of books in a lovely velvety wallet so we've got owner's manual which is in Japanese some maintenance records underneath there you go That's not dirt, that's just the uh, the way the fabric lies. I thought I'd brushed it all so it looks, <laughs> looks nice and neat, but hey ho, nice bench style seats, although as is probably apparent, they can move independently. Armrest there with the obligatory cup holder. If we're counting the cup holders, we've got another one there and there, and the same on the other side too. We've got the Additional visibility mirrors there, so you can see the icons on the sh on the side showing you what they're looking at. And then we've also got that one at the back there, which helps you see where your bumper is and how close you are to whatever you're reversing towards. So sliding doors both sides. All of the end boxes, I get asked about this quite a lot, have isofix on both sides. So that's the, uh, there are the isofix points there and there, and then the same on the other side. The seats in the back, they don't slide forwards and backwards, but you do have two positions for the backrest. So that gives you an idea. That's one of them put back and one of them in, in the forward position. There's absolutely loads of legroom in these cars. You, they really do feel like a much bigger car than they actually are from the external footprint. I've, I say it in every video of this, but just in case you haven't watched the others, <laughs> Honda have, uh, have done a cracking job at, uh, at, making, at giving a real sense of space in a car that is actually quite small in terms of its external dimensions. Just have a look in the boot so there's another button there for unlocking and locking if you need to directly from the boot so not a huge boot size but very reasonable for the car and the uh, the ace up its sleeve i suppose is that or is that what you can do with the seats to increase the load carrying space if you need to so let's have a look at that first part of it and if you've owned other Hondas like a Jazz for example before you will be familiar with this is that the seats do that and so that gives you a much bigger load carrying space down here and then what you can also do is fold them flat to the floor like that So if you only need to have one, if you uh, only have one passenger in the back, you, that gives you a much larger space for carrying longer items. And then if you want to go the whole hog, runs on standard, unleaded by the way, E10's fine just while we're going past the fuel filler. So if you want to go the whole hog, you can put both seats flat like that. And that does give you really quite a large boot space that is much bigger than a lot of much larger cars. I'm thinking of the, uh, the SUVs in particular, which are huge from the outside, but actually not particularly great in terms of useful space inside. Underneath here then, 
we don't have a spare wheel. That's not just for this car, that's for all of the end boxes. So we've got the towing eye jack, tyre inflation fluid. I've I always put a fresh can of tyre weld in as well. That's just my cleaning stuff, so do ignore that. I'll just show you the startup now. That beeping is because I haven't got my seatbelt on. So you see the Eco Leaf is uh, in full effect there. That's, that's the norm when you switch on and then you can switch it off by just pressing the button there. Also deactivates the start stop feature if you switch the Econ off. Have a quick look under the bonnet. So as I say in all my videos, I'm, I'm not really one for polishing engine bays. So there's a little bit of dust there, but there's no leaks. The engine sounds good. It's been serviced, as I said. This is a, a, a cracking little engine. Honda obviously are no strangers to making decent small engines, small petrol engines, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, so yeah, lovely engine, sounds good. Okay, that's about it for this video. Thank you very much for joining me on this tour around this 2013 Honda N-Box G. If you're interested in buying it, then obviously I would love to sell it to you. My email address will be in the description of this video, so please do get in touch if you'd like to come and have a look and a test drive. A few other things, so if you want to know about insurance, I've got a list of sort of suggested insurers. I don't have any affiliation with any of them, but they're insurers that have come up uh, time and time again in terms of being willing to cover Japanese imports. This one is ULES compliant and it's also compliant with all the other clean air zones around the country. Road tax at current rates is £210 for the year. So if you've got any other questions about it, best way to get those answered is to get in touch with me via the email address in the description. I look forward to hearing from you so thanks very much for joining me again and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.